Hello and welcome to Mountain Aromatics. I am going live obviously at this minute and so I wanted to um, talk about fixatives because I know I haven't seen everybody in a long time. So hello, it's good to see you. I hope all of you are doing well and taking care and uh, that you are taking care of yourself and your families. <clears throat> and um, also hope that you can hear me pretty well. And also I did turn on the chat, so that should be available for you guys. Um, although I'm on my phone, so this is recording on my phone, so I am not going to see the chat, I don't think. This is the first time I've ever done this so on my phone going live so anyway what did what I wanted to talk about um, is a little complicated so it's about fixatives and with fixatives there are some definite aroma chemicals that are made to be fixatives, that is their purpose, that is the point, and um, I guess more people in here, hello. And then there are some materials that are, that have fixative properties, but they are not materials created to be fixatives. So let me give you an example of the first aroma chemical that's made to be a fixative and that's its purpose. There are a number of them but we'll just go for the, the easiest one. Fixator, get it? It's in the name. Fixator 505. Now, you do not need to use this at 100%. You can bring that down to a 1%, a 5%, a 10% depending on how you formulate. If you um, formulate kind of high um, at 100%, then bring your fixative down to fixator 505 down to like a 10%. And then if you have most of your aroma chemicals like all at 20%, bring your fixator down to like a 1%. One, a 1%. So those of you who are new, you need to know and you need to understand that you will more than likely there's a 99% chance you're not going to smell fixator 505 let me just pull it unless I already have it pulled um it just doesn't really it doesn't have an aroma and mine's at 10% because I do all of my formulation mostly at 100% <laughs> at 100% and then I dilute it down later to like a five to ten percent so fixator 505 mine's at ten percent and there's a little hint of you're gonna think it smells like ambrox and um that type of thing but it is its purpose is a worker material so it is a fixator it's a, I call a work I've named worker materials I don't think I've ever heard that before but I call some materials worker materials so this is one of those worker materials meaning it does work there's a point and there's a reason for what it does so that is one fixative that you can add to your formula. Um, I know your question is going to be, okay, how much do I add to a formula? Make your formula 0.5% of a fixative worker material or 1%. Something really low because they are powerful. They're not going to smell powerful whatsoever you're gonna be like what is it I can't even really smell anything is it doing anything yes it's doing something I'll give you another one so fixable way f i x o b o i s b o i s boys means wood um, so it's a wood fixative 
and mine's at 10%. Um, again, bring it down to a 1% if all your materials are down to a, like a 20%. This is another one that I don't think you're going to smell it. It takes a long time. I'll be honest with you, I don't care. It took me more than a year and a half before I was able to like really smell it. And a lot of times bringing it way down to a 1% to a 0.1%, 0.01%, you're like, what? But yeah, for real, you can bring them way, way down. And a lot of times, um, to me, this is my opinion, Bring it down with what? Perfumers, alcohol. With these fixatives, in order to, when you um, bring something down to like a 1% or something like that, in order to smell it on the test strip, it's going to be much easier to smell something with perfumers, alcohol, than it will be to smell it in IPM, isopropyl mirror state. Um, so just so you know so if you are if you get a new material in I don't care what it is and you're like I need to learn this material I want to smell this material you can bring it down to a 10% a 5% a 1% a 0.01% and make little bitty vials of each one each one of those and get a test strip for each one and then smell them all and write down the differences that you smell in each percentage and then log that and then you'll know oh my gosh it smells actually better at a one percent so you could make that material at a one percent when you use it because you know for you it smells a lot better and it blooms and blossoms and that's pretty much all materials are kind of like that so um so what I was saying in the beginning, the whole point of this video is with materials that are created to be fixatives and then materials that are made and created for their aroma properties and they have fixative properties to them. So that's different. And typically it's gonna be a high molecular weight, which is gonna be a lot of the woods, those types of things, like um, 200 um, and above with the molecular weight, those are gonna last a lot longer. Um, so the higher the molecular weight, the heavier, the, the bigger the molecule, the heavier the molecule, the longer it's gonna sit there. Um, I can go into that, but I won't. So anyway, those can have some fixative properties to them. And so that is what makes perfumery complicated and confusing. I have gotten so many questions um, lately from viewers asking about fixatives and how much of a fixative do I use and which fixative and it's just it's complicated because some um, like sandalwoods have fixative values to them they have fixative properties to them it will help be a fixative in your formula but that's not why you use sandalwood you use sandalwood for its aroma for its smell in your formula it just so happens that there are times when you use materials that are going to help with that fixative value for example vetiver essential oil thick um, and it's going to have a, it's going to have fixative properties to it but I never, ever, 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 ever use vetiver for, to be a fixative, for a fixative value, and that's it. I use vetiver for the aroma when I need and I am wanting the properties of the smell of, a, of vetiver. 
that is when I want to use it. I do not want to use it in a formula just because of its fixative value because it's going to change the aroma of your whole formula. And if that's not what you're wanting, you don't want to go there. So that's why perfumery and fixatives are can be incredibly confusing because there is a lot to learn. So if you're speaking about just fixatives for your formula, I want my formula to last longer, what do I use? Even that question is, compl the answer is complicated to that question because there are fixatives for citruses that are gonna help the citruses last a little bit longer that are going to be more helpful than other fixatives for other materials. And there's not just like a list of that, because that would be, a, I mean, it would be a book. It would be a book of, of different things. But what, what I can tell you is um, there are some... Um, I'm grabbing important information, I promise. So there are some materials that there has been some research done with a specific material. And how do we get this material? Um, I'll give you one. Um, alpha ionone. Well, that one <laughs> stays around, but they took alpha ionone and they're like, what can we put with it? Um, like Fixator 505, Benzyl Benzoate, um, Musk and Pret, IPM. What can we put with it that lasts the longest? And they did research on a number of materials. So I'll give you one right now. And that is, um, well, I already said it. So alpha ionone. With alpha ionone, it was Fixator 505 that helped that alpha ionone last the longest. And they tried it with all of these different fixatives. Um, even, this is so complicated, even hedione can be, it has fixative values. It just does. So I'm gonna give you one that people use all the time and it is one of the materials that if you're a beginner you wanna get because it is gonna, you're gonna want it in a bunch of your formulas, and that'll be linalol. And it's best to, to get the linalol synthetic and not the linalol natural, because the linalol natural is going to be slightly different every single time you buy it because of the rain, because of where that linalol was sourced from, what the season was like, all this kind of stuff. So every time you get linalol, it's going to be slightly different in the natural. So if you get your linalol synthetic, it's going to be very consistent. It's going to be exactly the same every time you purchase it. So that's why that's one of the upsides of getting some synthetics because they're, they're nature identicals. That's the other name for it. It's a nature identical. It's exactly the same, except for it's more consistent, the synthetic. So they took linalol and they did the same research and they used all these different fixatives and they're like, which one has the longest value, makes linalol last the longest? Again, it was Fixator 505. <laughs> so another one, I'll tell you, um, so geranol, geran geranol, G-E-R-A-N-I-O-L, like I use, I use Geranol Courier. Um, that, of course, smells like um, rose. That, actually, when you add hedione to that, it makes it, instead of lasting a day, it makes it last three days. I mean, I'm giving you research that I did. There is, re they do research. I mean, you have to dig, and I am a research freak, and I dig and dig and dig. And I pulled a piece of literature 
and read all through the however many pages it was. It was incredibly long and pulled this research out of it. I so did. I love this stuff. So anyway, so when you use geranol, um, geranol, uh, which is the alcohol of geranium, if you add heady onto it, it's going to make it last much, much longer. Um, another one that I'll give you something different phenyl ethyl alcohol so that was tested and the material that made it last the longest is benzyl benzoate see it just and i mean they used fixator 505 ipm um benzyl benzoate uh all of these different fixatives and they did research to find out which one makes this specific material last longer and um yeah, it's crazy amazing. Um, I'll give you um, one more um, that people tend to use a lot, and that will be um, like gamma octalactone. Gamma octalactone, so the eight gamma octalactone. Can you? I saw a chat. Um, but it's not staying. So I hope you guys are able to chat because I cannot see. I think when this is my first time doing this, going live, just so you know. So hopefully you guys are able to do the chat. This is on my phone. I'm using my phone. I'm not using my computer, so I cannot see the chat. Um, uh, so I'll figure this out. But I did see a message pop up and then it went away, a chat. So, um, whoops. Anyway, gamma octalactone. It, there's two of them that the research, there we go. What makes niche fragrances different from designer fragrances? And then it went away. Oh, I can answer that in just a second. Um, so the gamma octalactone, musk and brett, and benzyl benzoate, both, both of those gave um, longevity to the gamma octalactone. Just so you know, there you go. I gave you a bunch of research that I did for free. There you go. So um, let me answer that question really quick. Um, typically, I'd like to stay on topic. Uh, just I'm kind of that way um, with fixatives for right now. But anyway, I'll answer the other one. What's the difference between niche fragrances and the popular fragrances? The, the main thing is niche fragrances like mine. I can go in any direction I want, and I will go in a deep, dark direction with tobacco and labdanum in a way that you will never smell a fragrance like that in the mall, even high-end fragrances. All of the high-end fragrances, they their target audience is the entire world. They are trying to reach and make a fragrance that every let's just say their target audience is a woman, that every single woman wants to buy it because every single woman likes it. Well, that is the opposite thinking of niche fragrances. With niche fragrances, I want to make um, a fragrance that is completely different and nothing like what is on the market for the for the world for you know the the huge world the other thing is is that a lot of times you'll have niche fragrance um creators like myself who have a myriad of fragrances and formulas that are just completely different and if you i don't care how crazy are different the aroma that you really really like eventually you're going to come across something that i've made that you're really going to like that's very different that just people have just 
have not really created before. It's just that is the big difference is that I'm not creating for a mass market for a huge number of people. I make fragrances that only a very even a few people might like one of my fragrances and I'm beyond fine with that because it's just I'm making stuff that is not on the market in fact I've said this before but if you're new you can try this if you want to because it's exactly what I did but and of course you don't have to but when I first started I because I wasn't, when I first started, hilarious, but I was not, I didn't even wear cologne, perfume, anything like that. I never, I didn't go to the mall and smell all them. I didn't know the names of them. I didn't know what they smelled like. I didn't know anything. And I started doing perfumery and learning all the materials and never smelling anything by Tom Ford, anything by Gucci, anything, I just, I had no idea, I didn't even know who Tom Ford was for two years after I started making fragrances, I promise you, I just, I did not go to the mall and smell stuff, because I didn't care about fragrances, but I did here with individual stuff, so I started creating my own formulas and fragrances without having an understanding of what all of the mass market fragrances smelled like I had no idea and I did that for a solid and I mean a solid two years it, it it was over two years before I ever went and oh they give out free samples sometimes so I'm gonna smell these samples and smell what it smells like and it was a whole nother world because I had, I made nothing like all of those things my stuff was just completely different Anyway, that's the difference in niche fragrances and mass market fragrance. It's the whole point is they're mass market for everyone. Um, so I have um, somebody is just asking about um, information for beginners. There is, uh, if you go to my list of videos I have one of my list is beginners and if you just go I have more than a hundred videos go under the beginners videos they're all listed under beginners videos and start watching those and there's hours of information there and you need to watch them and a lot of times I have many many videos on very specific fragrances but a lot of times I'll tell you on my videos, they're deceptive because a lot of times it will say Ambroxan and that video is way more than just Ambroxan. It's I usually go into all kinds of other things and when you watch most of my videos, I usually go into it and I'm like, oh, add this, let's make a fragrance, add this, add this, and add this. These things go with Ambroxan and I do that in almost all my videos. So go back and watch a bunch of those videos because like for beginners you're going to want to know you know your top 10 your top fives all that kind of stuff like you need hedione um so um you need hedione clearwood hedione hc timber silk isoe super you need um, PEA, phenyl ethyl alcohol. You need um, patchouli, essential oil. You need bergamot, essential oil. You need geranol um, that I spoke about earlier. You, I, mean, I could just, yeah, I could go on and on and on. For beginners, let me tell you something. A massive to me piece of advice is get some accords purchase a few accords that you can have so you are not just making formulas by just individual um, aroma chemical molecules because that's it's difficult it takes time 
you know, you're going to be learning. And when you have some accords, it's going to make things is easier for you. And then two, it's going to give you, oh my God, that smells awesome. And you're going to feel good and you're going to want to keep going. And so what am I talking about? Like what kind of accords? So get a, um, like a Jasmine Rose Accord. That will be helpful. Get a, um, a, like a, a, fru a fruity accord, get a floral accord, and then if you don't want to get just a generic floral accord, you can get a white petal accord. So the more narcotic, heavier florals, and get an accord for that. Get a wood accord, and, and it's called wood base. I think it's by Fermanish, but it's called wood base. Get, you need that. Like that's a really good, it will so help you out instead of trying to learn how to make your own wood accord and all that kind of stuff. It just is, it's, it's complicated and it takes time. It really takes time to do that. So if you give yourself some accords along with, um, um, along with your hedium, your clear wood, your timber silk, your isoe super, your the citrus is um, bergamot essential oil, and you're able to add a couple of accords with those, you are going to open up your world and you're going to be able to make a simple formula that smells really, really good. I have an entire line of um, accords and bases. Um, you're like, oh my god, what's the difference? Oh my god, that's a whole nother video. It's a, it's complicated. Um, because when I say bases, I don't mean like a base note. I mean just a base formula that is pretty complicated. So you could get three of my bases and make a complete fragrance just by getting a top base, a middle base, and a bottom base. Um, so my bases are like that and I'm on Etsy and if you go to Mountain Aromatics um, that's my Etsy shop and I have tons of accords and that kind of stuff so anyway so the, the other question I get a lot is always oh my god I feel like I get the question every single day um, about silage and um, projection and fixatives and fixatives are not going to kill or tamp down or make your silage go away it's not going to make your projection go away um, like this fixator 505 or the fixable way that is not going to hamper your projection by any stretch of the imagination and when I say um, projection and silage you need to think aldehydes so aldehyde C12 MNA that's a great one so if you want beginner people if you want one molecule that is going to give projection and um, silage meaning you walk through the room and 10 minutes later you're still there because people still smell you that's silage and then projection is just how far it goes away far it goes out and um the aldehydes do that so that is a um there are no powders for silage no there's no powders there they um um you know no, no powders or crystals come to mind when I think of silage. It's aldehydes. So, um, like aldehyde C10, the C10s, the C11s, the C12s, all of those are going to give you silage. And all of those need to be down to like 1% and 0.1% and 0.01%. 
they are cray cray and they need to be a very very they need to be 0.1% of your formula or 0.5% of your entire formula to a max like of 1% of your entire formula. That is, I mean they are just powerful and you don't need an entire one ounce of C12 MNA because that is going to last you a life time. A lifetime buying that at 100%. Side note, it's not good to store all of these aldehydes that I'm talking about, um, the silage projection aldehydes, at 100%. Store them like at 50% um, and keep them very cool if you have a, um, this is not for you beginners because you're gonna be like what I mean you just go down these roads but a refridge a refrigerator a small little refrigerator just for perfumery just for those things but you don't have to have them but keep them in a in a um, a dark bottle they need to be in a dark bottle they need to be stored at like 50% or below the aldehydes so anyway that's kind of a side note um, so back to fixatives. Other fixatives are, see that's the other reason that when I get a material in, when I purchase a material, I go and look up that material and it's gonna tell me the molecular weight of it. And when you have a molecular weight of like 200 or more, or like 180 or more, it's going to have some longevity. It's going to be 300 hours on the test strip, that type of stuff. So that can give you some fixative properties to it. But if you are just looking for s materials that are fixatives and that is their point, so they are not purchased for how they smell, that is Fixator 505, um, Fixaboy, um, which is um, F-I-X-O-B-O-I-S. Um, um, to me, Z11MIP, Z11MIP, that is another one that is um, like a, just a, like a made to be a fixative and not for its aroma and you need to bring it way down um, meaning bring it down to 0 0.01 percent 0.1 percent or one percent that type of thing and that will give your formula some fixative properties but if you use a number of materials that are bases that are Base bases, sandalwoods, um, and a lot of times you can use sandalwoods when you don't want a strong aroma, you want a lighter aroma. So a lot of times when you're making a really feminine, more floral type um, of formula, use a sandalwood and that's going to give you some fixative properties to it with a lighter wood, a, more of a white wood and not so deep dark wood like oud. And speaking of oud, there you go. Tons of fixative properties to it, although it is, they're gonna smell, like they're gonna be very, very strong. So you, that is an instance where you're using oud for the aroma, not, I'm using oud so I can have fixative, so my formula will be have fixatives in it. Well, no, it's your formula's gonna smell like oud, and if that's not what you're wanting, well, you go with something different. That is why to me this is complex. It's confusing for beginners because it, it, there's just a lot to learn and every single material is completely different. They're just all very, very different. Um, so I hope that helps with 
you learning some about fixatives, all of that kind of stuff. So the other thing I wanted to share was I made another soap and it is, um, I made it with my, um, I use my aromas that I make, my accords, that kind of stuff. So this is tuberose and Oh, it just sends me into La La Land. Oh my God, I love it. So this is cold process soap. Cold process soap. And this is a little melt and pour. It's called an embed. I put it on the top, but it is still curing. It has to cure for like four to six weeks. It's so strong. Oh my God, it is so good. Oh my God, I love tuberose love tuberose. Ugh. So anyway, hopefully this live worked and worked well and should be, should post soon um, as well. And you can go back and review it and watch it again. And again, for you beginners, please go to my beginners list of videos and there are tons of videos for beginners for you to learn tons of stuff um, as there's a lot to go over and a lot to learn and I've already done tons so um, just because I may have done them a year or so ago doesn't mean they don't have value they absolutely do they have tons of value you just have to go through them and watch them so thank you so much for being here and I really hope this works out um, because if this does, this will be easier for me and I'm more likely to do a lot more, way more often. So thank you so much um, for being here. I appreciate your love and your support. And I have a link to my Patreon below if you would like to support. And I appreciate that. I, um, I have no idea how often I will go live if this works and um, like, this is my first time doing this live. If this works and posts and does all that kind of stuff easy, then I will be doing these way more often because the other one takes hours for me to upload and do all this kind of stuff to it. So anyway, thank you very much for being here. I will see you on the next Mountain Aromatics. Have a good day. and I'm going to have to find a way to stop this because I don't even know how.